what was that ending? If you've read this book, tell me, what was that ending? Danica... Hello everybody, it's your girl Jay, and today I am here with my September wrap-up part two for 2021. I wrote a total of nine books, but I like to talk, so I split it up into two parts, and these are the last four books that I read for this month. So without further ado, let us get started. The first book that I have to talk about is Witch Please, and this is by Anne Aguirre. This is the first book in the Fix It Witches series, and I give this a 3 out of 5 stars. So this follows Danica Waterhouse. She is a witch, and she owns a magical tech repair shop with her cousin. One day, she meets Titus, who is the owner of Sugar Daddy Bakery, and their chemistry is undeniable, and it ends up blossoming into something more. The only problem is, is that Titus is a mundane, and Danica Scram has never been shy to say how she feels about mundanes because of their inability to carry on the witch bloodline. Danica has been told her entire life that if she were to fall in love with a mundane and choose to be with him, then she would lose her powers forever. So Danica has to figure out a way to make both parties happy or miss out on a chance of a once-in-a-lifetime love, and it's like the story of that. So this was fun. I definitely was not a fan in the first half of the book. I really didn't like it specifically because of the insane insta-love. It was literally the first time this man saw Danica. He was like, I love her, we're gonna have babies, we're gonna have five children, and she doesn't really have a say in it, like, this is the way it's gonna be, and I, it was just creepy. But the second half of the book, everything is kind of explained, and it makes a lot more sense, and I mean, it's still creepy, but it made it more tolerable. But the second half is definitely much better than the first half, in my opinion. I actually listened to this on audiobook, and I think the narrator did a really great job. I really enjoyed the navigation of both Titus's family dynamics and Danica's family dynamics, and then them having to navigate each other's family dynamics. It was really interesting and very complex, so it was a lot of fun to read about. I really liked both main characters. Danica was very fierce and strong. She always stood up for what she believed in, especially with her gram, which I really loved in the end. Also, big fan of Titus. He is such a little cinnamon roll. We love a bisexual king. I was very confused about how he could possibly be a virgin because he is literally like the perfect specimen. But like I said, I was not a fan of the insta love. Literally as soon as Titus saw Danica, he was like, she's the one. We're having five kids. We're going to be in love forever. This is wonderful. Without actually saying one word to her. It was just creepy. The sex scenes were great in this. I very much enjoyed them and I loved how each character always looked for consent before they were to do anything with each other. I think that's a very important message and I really loved it. There's also a witch hunter plot line, which I really liked, and then it kind of got lost in the middle of the story, which was really disappointing, so I'm hoping if I end up picking up the second book, it focuses more on the witch hunt aspect, because I think that that could have been really cool. But overall, like, it was enjoyable. Second half, definitely better than the first half, so I ended up giving it three out of five stars. Next up, I have a Bad Witch Burning by Jessica Lewis. I gave this four stars. This follows Cottrell, who has the ability to summon ghosts from the dead by writing them letters. Cottrell charges a small price for others to use this ability and she uses that money towards paying bills and supporting her mother and her deadbeat boyfriend Gerald. During a summoning she receives a message from one of the ghosts that tells her that if she is to continue summoning anybody things are going to turn very bad very quickly. Her next summoning results in her actually raising somebody from the dead and she quickly realizes that with these resurrections she could make a lot more money than she is already. But things quickly take a turn for the worst and Kachal realizes that she needs to fix what she started before more people get hurt and it's like the story of that. So I didn't expect this book to be as hard-hitting as it was. I was expecting like a fun-filled fantasy about a girl who is resurrecting dead people for a little extra cash, you know, like a good old time. But it is so much deeper than 
that and covers a lot more difficult topics than I thought it was originally. This definitely does not feel like a debut novel. I was instantly hooked on this story and these characters. You just cannot put the book down because you want to know what is going to happen to Cottrell and her situation. Cottrell's character honestly broke my heart. I would not say that she is necessarily a likable character, but she has just been through so much in 16 years. You cannot help but want her to succeed in life and get out of the shitty situation that she is in. I really hated Cottrell's mom and Gerald. I thought they were just despicable characters and I hated every single time her mom would do something bad or Gerald would do something and her mom would stand up for him and then Cottrell would be like, well, she's my mom. I love her. I have to support her. Like, no. It just drove me crazy. I just wanted to like reach out and give her like a big hug and be like, girl, no, you deserve so much better. I can't. I just wanted her to get out. I'm very happy that she had some positive adult role models to look up to, such as her guidance counselor, Mike, and her best friend, Will's mom. I think that they are very good people to have in her life and how adults should treat children. I also really liked Will and Cottrell's friendship, although at times it was a little bit rocky. I think it was important for Cottrell to have to go through what she did in order to realize how valuable Will and her friendship in her life was. I do think that the pacing was a little bit off at times, and I think that there was a lack of world building in regards to Cottrell's ability. So I did end up taking a star off for those reasons, but overall I did really enjoy this. I think that it was definitely a lot more emotional than I thought going into it, but I liked it, so four out of five stars. Next up, I have That Weekend by Kara Thomas, and I gave this 3.5 out of five stars. This follows Claire and her two best friends who were supposed to spend a weekend away after prom at a lake house in the mountains, but when Claire wakes up bloody and alone on a hiking trail, she does not have any memory of the last 48 hours. Everyone is turning to Claire for answers that she cannot provide and as time ticks on she starts to worry that something really bad must have happened to her two friends and it's the story of her trying to figure it out. So I was really into this when I was reading it. I was thinking it was going to be a 4.5. It was really fun to read and then I got to the ending and that ending resulted in taking off the star that I did because it was just not good. What was that ending? If you've read this book, tell me, what was that ending? I do think that the book was pretty predictable plot-wise, but overall, like, vibes and fun that I had reading it, it was going to be a 4.5. I really liked the different points of views from the past and the present. I think that it was a really great way to tell this story, and the past definitely gave you a lot more of an insight and backstory on these characters and their relationship dynamics. I really loved seeing Claire's perception of Kat and Jesse shift as the story progressed and she began to remember more and more about what happened that night. Claire did bother me at times. She became very annoying very quickly, but I will give her the benefit of the doubt because I'm sure I would be really annoying and become obsessed with figuring out what happened to her friends because she couldn't remember. I also really enjoyed how we got chapters from another character later on in the story. It wasn't just Claire's perspective. I think that that was a really interesting way to tell the story and I definitely wasn't expecting it. I do think that this is a story that you should go into knowing as little as possible for, which is why I'm being very vague with everything I'm talking about, but I did enjoy it. 3.5 out of 5 stars would have been a 4.5 if it wasn't for that ending. And then finally, I have The Golden Lily by Rochelle Mead. This is the second book in the Bloodline series, which is a spin-off of the Vampire Academy series. I gave this a 2 out of 5 stars. So I went into this book with a very, very low expectations because I was not the biggest fan of the first book because of some messages it was sending to very young readers that are very impressionable at that age. I am happy to say that a lot of the messages were talked about, especially the one 
about constantly needing to be skinny and the talk about weight loss was addressed but it wasn't until the very end of the book and this book is like 400 and something pages so and I'm talking like the end of the book so it's still a whole another book constantly pushing the fact that you should be skinny onto young impressionable readers and I just don't vibe with that message. I will say that the writing style is addictive and you do want to keep reading because you want to know what's going to happen next with these characters. I am still a big fan of Adrian. I think he is a little sweetie pie. Sydney definitely grew on me more in this book. The first book she annoyed the shit out of me but she's definitely growing on me. Angeline also grew on me in this book. I think that she was a lot of fun and I am very excited to see what crazy antics she gets up to in the next book. Brayden was really annoying. I think that he is probably one of my most unlikable characters that I've read. I just wanted to kick him in the shins anytime he was on page and I am glad or hoping at least that he is not going to be in the next book but we'll see I guess. I'm definitely going to continue on with this series because I do want to know what happens next. I just don't feel like I can give it higher than a two because I personally do not think that young impressionable readers should be getting the constant message of weight loss in their books. So that's probably just a me preference, but I just don't feel like I can rate it higher than a two. It is fun though, but read it when you're not impressionable, okay? Just, no. Alright everybody, so that was my September part 2 wrap up for 2021. Let me know down below if you have read any of these books and what you thought of them and I will see you all in my next video. Goodbye!